Alberto Ayala is the Deputy Executive Director at the California Air Resources Board. And Alberto, what I'd love to get you talking about is this whole concept of connected cars, where we can now look at the transportation system as a system and not just try to improve individual units, but attack it as a system. Is this something that CARB is looking into? Um, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the short answer is, is we are looking into, into it and we are actually very interested in uh, get a better understanding in terms of the true potential. Uh, I do believe that for the things that we care about, the environment, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, there is a benefit from this future technology that has to do with connected cars, autonomous cars, that are going to give us system-wide efficiencies. Uh, I am very interested in being able to figure out uh, supportive and smart policies that can actually embrace the concept because I do believe that it's going to happen whether we like it or not. So where I'm coming from is we better understand this and, and in particular for the environment, what is the true potential? Because I do think that system-wide efficiency improvements uh, are real, uh, a real benefit for the environment. I remember, and this is going back some 20 years, that Caltrans did a study that showed if you can keep a car going at a steady right. 70 miles an hour instead of stop and go, stop, the, the, the reduction in emissions is dramatic. No, and that's absolutely, and again, I'm glad that you mentioned Caltrans because what I'm talking about in terms of figuring out a state approach to promoting system-wide efficiency is a statewide effort. It's not just the California Air Resources Board. We are working very closely with our uh, sister agencies like Caltrans uh, because we all have responsibility under our climate protection program. And, and again, we're all looking at this as a potential opportunity, not fearing as something that needs to be walked away from, but rather something that uh, we need to think about future policies that can actually support it. Some people think that, especially once we get to autonomous cars, there may be a detriment. I'm not one of those, but there are people yeah. making this argument because if I don't have to do the driving, what do I care? I might move farther away from my job out in the countryside and the like, and now miles driven increase and right. maybe there's more pollution. What's your sense? No, I mean, and those are fair questions. I mean, you know, the whole concept of, of the rebound effect, I mean, it's not a new concept. I think we all need to be somewhat um, uh, not fearful, but skeptical. I mean, we need to ask hard questions. We need to understand this issue. I think uh, we're just beginning to scratch the surface in terms of getting a good understanding what the true potential is. And we need to do our homework to make sure that we understand and get our hands around the concept. Uh, but what I do believe, and, and some of the evidence is starting to come out in the published literature, is that there is a benefit to the environment because we're going to be more efficient moving people and things, mm -hmm. more importantly. Freight is, is, a, is an important component here. And again, uh, we are following this very closely and trying to do what we can to make sure that uh, we promote this type of technology development. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned freight because seemingly big trucks on the road would be the first to yeah. adopt this. Yeah. Because as you know, that they're run by fleets and fleets go right. by the penny to the mile. And if you can yeah. show them an economic benefit, they'll adapt that technology probably faster than consumers. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, uh, changing freight and the way we move things is not a trivial thing. Uh, but again, I think uh, if, 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 if we've shown anything is, is that we can tackle the impossible and show that it can be done and we are confident that we're going to crack this one too. We have zero emission vehicles. Do you think we'll get to a zero emission transportation system? Yes, absolutely. That's care, care to put a year out on when that might well, happen? Well, you know, we have convictions that, uh, you know, we have t targets for 2030, uh, 2040 and 2050 and we do see the long-term prospect. To be able to meet our targets, we got to get off of oil for transportation. and. In 2030, we're going to reduce petroleum use in cars and trucks by 50%, so that'll put us on the glide path. Real good. Alberto Ayala, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power.